Welcome to the daily Glasgow Cappuccino. Start each day of COP26 by drinking in a few minutes of warm, stimulating conversation about climate resilience. I'm your host, Peter Willis from The Resilience Shift. Shall we begin? My guest on this morning's Cappuccino is Bijal Brambat. A civil engineer by training, Bijal is the executive director of the Mahila Housing Trust, or MHT, based in Ahmedabad in India. MHT's mission is to organize and empower women in poor communities to build their resilience to climate change by improving their homes with services such as clean water, toilets, electricity, and ventilation. Welcome, Bijal. It's wonderful to have you here on our cappuccino. I, w- I would love to know, Bijal, um, from all the years, I, mean, I believe you've been with uh, MHT for 23 years now, and it's director for 10. What would you say, from all those years of experience, are the essential building blocks that go to make up a resilient community in the sort of cities where you and your organization work? Uh, So I think the first uh, building block is, uh, you know, uh, trying to organize uh, the poor women and their collectives uh, themselves uh, because they should be gathering the evidence and reaching out to the city authorities and other stakeholders and speaking in their interest. Now, um, this is a little bit challenging because you must understand that the poor's attention is always, uh, you know, gathered by short term issues like uh, having access to water or probably, you know, getting fees for education for their children or the next meal. And so uh, getting them organized around issues of uh, climate change, which is a little bit abstract uh, to them. So most of them uh, do say that, oh, the heat is increasing or uh, there are unpredicted rains, but, uh, you know, it's all God's act. So how do you really uh, demystify this scientific issue and uh, get their attention and get them to organize uh, around this issue? Because the first step is organizing and they themselves assessing their vulnerabilities and talking to the government. So I think that's the most essential thing. Uh, The second thing I think is that, uh, you know, the processes that you undertake should enable the poor to uh, forge disruptive collaborations with the scientists, the governments, the technologists, uh, etc. And so uh, these disruptive collaborations uh, should actually bring about a change in the city, uh, in their communities and uh, settlements. The third thing that I think is is most essential uh, is that and should be brought out by the communities to the city governments is that the governments need to look at disaster uh, or climate change mitigation, adaptation and resilience in an integrated manner. Uh, because, you know, the government is still working in silos of either mitigation or adaptation. Resilience is yet to be a very new concept to them. The uh, challenge though is that the poor have to claim their spaces with the government. Uh, uh, So, uh, you know, you've really uh, got to build an atmosphere of trust and partnerships uh, to get them to uh, claim that spaces uh, with the government. So that is, I think, essentially uh, very, very important. Uh, That's what we do as a third step. And the fourth step, uh, of course, is that then they start influencing the policies and the programs uh, in favor uh, of the poor, but not only in favor of the poor, but would also then expand to include entire cities. So I'm interested, Bijal, in what you think the um, organizations from the Global South, like MHT and others that you link with, what do you bring to Glasgow, to these COPs, that is unique and potentially potent into the consciousness of the negotiators? It has been our observation and our experience that uh, probably, uh, you know, the negotiators uh, think that the, or probably act in a manner that, and think of only larger issues like, say, transportation, or probably, uh, you know, uh, in the case of India, so much more emphasis is given on only renewable energy. 
So first of all, I think they think in terms of silos, of mitigation, adaptation, and resilience, as I said, and they need to think in an integrated manner. Uh, the second thing I think that we tend to ignore is that, uh, you know, with the fast-paced urbanization that cities are going to, uh, you, know, uh, you know, experience across the global south, uh, you know, it's going to play a huge havoc because, uh, you know, uh, this intersection of urbanization, climate change, and informality uh, is is going to deprive the poor the most. Urbanization is being talked about in silos, climate change in silos. So this intersection is very important uh, to understand and how the uh, deprivation of the poor is going to increase much more uh, due to these intersections is something that we can also offer uh, to the uh, negotiators at Glasgow. And lastly, I think all the research, the debates and the investments um, I have to ultimately go towards action on the ground. I mean, we are in every year, you know, countries are meeting, their negotiations are happening uh, and, and the, a lot of money is flowing in there too. But, uh, you know, how, how much of it percolates uh, down the ground is a challenge and also how it includes the poor, you know, because all of us know that they contribute the list and, uh, you know, they bear the biggest brunt. So how including, uh, you know, their actions are and uh, how the voices of poor are going to be brought in is something that they all uh, need to think about and give prominence to. You're painting a picture there, Bijal, of an increasingly complex and compressed and stressed environment in the cities of the global south uh, as these climate change and urbanization intersect. And I just wonder at a personal and professional level, how you and your team manage to draw the energy and the inspiration and the courage to keep going? Where does that come from? I think firstly, the inspiration uh, and the courage to keep going on in such a complex environment also comes in from the communities that we work with, especially women, because uh, we have seen how, how vulnerable they are and how easy it is to get pulled back in the spiral of poverty despite uh, several efforts that they are making uh, and you know uh, generation after generation uh, uh, you know being poorer or becoming increasingly poorer um, and despite those challenges those multiple challenges that they are facing they go on and on and on relentlessly happily and in a smiling way uh, you know so uh, that's what we really draw courage from so in fact even in my personal life uh, you know when we are depressed or uh, you know probably uh, yeah a little bit down we really draw inspiration from those women uh, on how they are uh, continuing the action and how uh, they are working for the betterment of their families and their economic conditions so i think that's a great dri driving force I think the second most important element is that because we work across levels from household to community to cities and also with various stakeholders, you are always on a learning path and you are also personally and professionally always developing, uh, learning new things, uh, you know, and developing on them. And if you have a culture within your organization that allows you to grow and, and, uh, and we do foster that culture, I think it is a huge, huge satisfaction. So that's where we get the strength from continually doing what we are doing. What an inspiring answer, Bijal. And I find myself wishing that the negotiators in Glasgow and at every COP were able somehow to be teleported into the reality that you're reporting from the ground with your women and communities, not only to see the, the way the problem actually manifests so differently to what they imagine in the North and in their offices and so on, but also to, to tap into that relentless ability to, jo to be joyful, even when things look desperate. Because that is a source of energy, just like coal or oil, isn't it? <laughs> yes. 
Look, I want to thank you very warmly, uh, Bijal. It's been such a pleasure meeting you, and um, I wish you every strength, you and your colleagues, with the extraordinary work you continue to do. And uh, may you be successful. <laughs>